So I know this process uh, in chapter six with the normal distribution takes a while to get used to. And part of it's wrapping your brain around the idea. And part of it's just wrangling the technology, whichever technology you might be using. And we happen to be using StatDisk. But I think students always take a while to adjust to this. And it's worth just doing a whole bunch of problems. So uh, let's take a look at some of the homework problems. I'll do some of the evens and you'll be doing the odds right next to them, which are very similar. Um, so in 6.2, uh, they give you almost all the examples use this bone density score. And the bone density scores uh, can be positive or negative and they have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Uh, which is kind of nice because that means a bone density score is already a z-score. Uh, think about that just for a second. If you have a bone density score of, of like, um, okay, where's my pen? There we go. If you, if you have a bone density score of 1.37 and you want to convert that to a z-score, uh, you'd subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation. And you'd get 1.37 divided by one, which is still 1.37. So uh, they're just giving you some examples in 6.2 where you don't have to worry about converting, right? The, the bone density score is already a z-score. Um, so that said, let's see what we can do with some of these problems. And the other thing that's nice, at least in these first few, is they've also drawn the picture for you already, which is normally the first step of the process. Um, so in number 10, they're asking us to find out what percentage of bone density scores would be greater than negative 1.04. And there's their picture and they've got it shaded in already. Uh, so let's just go ahead and jump straight over to StatDisk. And under analysis, we want to go to probability distributions and we want the normal distribution. And we had a Z value Oh, my memory is terrible. What was it? Uh, 1.04, negative 1.04. So negative 1.04. And let's evaluate that. And we particularly wanted the cumulative probability to the right of that. Um, another thing to notice, which I didn't point out, is they told you to round to four decimal places. So we'll go 0.8508. Um, so this area right here that's shaded in is 0 0.8508. So about 85% of bone density scores will be negative 1.04 or greater. Um, so the next one is going to be one of these uh, between two numbers. And keep in mind what we'll have to do is we'll have to figure out the total area to the left of 0.67. So we'll we'll figure out all of that, just because that's all the technology can do for us, is just the area to the left of 0.67. And then we'll subtract off, we'll figure out this portion right here, the area to the left of negative 1.07, and subtract that off. Uh, so let's start, first of all, with just the total area to the left of 0.67. So 0.6, oh, the area to the left of that is 0 0.7486, 7486, oops, blue, let's go back to blue, uh, 0.7486, and then we need to subtract from that uh, the area I shaded in purple, so 1.07, negative 1.07. Negative 1.07. That area to the left is 0.1423. So minus point, the purple area, 1423. And you can grab your calculator, or I think maybe I can do that one in my head. Let's see, that's 0.6067. Okay, um, so let's look at the next one. Let's look at 14, and that's already just an area to the left. Oh wait, they're going the other way around though. 
Uh, so 14, they're telling you to the area to the left. They're telling you this area in here is 0 0.3050. And they want to know what is the z-score. So they're essentially asking the question backwards of the two questions up here. Uh, so, and they, fortunately, the technology is set up to do that. So 0 0.3050 is the area to the left. And notice we can do that, we can fill that in. It has a box for cumulative area from the left, which is 0 0.3050. And when you evaluate that, it tells you the Z value is negative 0.51. So the Z score down here turned out to be negative 0 0.51. And if this is bone density scores, that's a bone density score of negative 0.51. Uh, and the last one's the same idea. They're telling you the area. Um, but this is the area on the right. And notice the stat disk is set up to do cumulative area from the left. So the stat disk is expecting us, if it's gonna if it's gonna find this z-score for us right here, is expecting us to give it this area, right, the area to the left. And we're gonna have to say, well, the whole area of the entire curve is one, 100%. So this part right here, uh, this part is the complement of the other part. So this part is one minus 0 0.2061. And uh, that's, not one I can necessarily do in my head, so let me grab my calculator. Um, hold on. Let me grab, I'm grabbing my phone right now. I should have this pulled up already. <laughs> uh, let's see, the calculator, okay. So we are doing one minus point two zero six one, And that's point seven nine three nine. Uh, so we can put into stat disk 0.7939, the area to the left, 0.7939. Evaluate that and get a Z value of about 0.82. So this one down here is about 0.82. A lot of times students uh, forget that they need this area to the left and they just put in 0.2061. Uh, let's look at what happens if you do that. If you just put in 0.2061 and evaluate, you get a Z value of negative 0.82. This is why a picture is so important. Hopefully you look at this picture and you say, this Z value is definitely to the right of zero. It's not negative. <laughs> uh, so then you go back and you say, I must have typed something wrong into that disk. And then you realize, oh yeah, it's area to the left. It needs to be this 0.7939 and you're ready to fix your problem. Okay, uh, let's look at a couple more. Uh, so let's look at these, which are the rest, basically the rest of the homework. Uh, and I'll just pick a few of these out uh, somewhat randomly. Um, so let's look at something like uh, number 20. Uh, so there are instructions up here, say this is normally distributed, mean of zero, standard deviation of one. They say draw a graph and then find the probability. And we are using technology. Uh, we're not using the table, so we'll round to four decimal places. Okay, uh, so all of these, the graph is gonna start the same way because all of them have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And for number 20, they're particularly interested in being less than 1.96. That's almost two up. So I'll just put it right there without worrying too precisely about where it is. And then everything less than that uh, means that we are going to be shading in everything to the left of that. So that would be all of that area. So that looks like it's almost 100% of the curve. It's probably just slightly less than 100% of the curve. Uh, but let's figure it out with stat disk. Um, that is the z-score, 1.96, and we want area to the left. So going back to stat disk. 
Let's get rid of that. And the Z value is 1.96. And we want to evaluate that. And we want to talk about the cumulative probability to the left. And that happens to be 0 0.9750, if you want to round to four places. Um, so this one would be 0 0.9750. Uh, let's do greater than 1.82. Again, picture is going to start off looking pretty similar. Here's your normal curve centered at zero. 1.82 is probably about here. And the greater than means we want to shade uh, to the right of that. So that would just be this bit right there is what we're looking for. And that's looks to me like a pretty small percentage of the curve, like maybe 5% or something, but let's find out. Uh, greater than 1.82. Uh, so 1.82. And the cumulative area to the right there, 0 0.0344. 0 okay. Uh, so let's do another between. Uh, so let's maybe look at 28 which is between negative 1.93 and negative 0.045. Okay, so picture, so I should have labeled these. This was number 20, this was number 22, this will be number 28. Uh, picture wise, we're gonna draw our normal curve, centered at zero, and we want negative 1.93, which is down here somewhere. And negative 0.45, which is still to the left of zero, although not hugely to the left of zero. And I want to shade or find uh, the area between those two things. And again, just looking at it visually, I'm guessing that's, I don't know what, like 40% or so of the curve, but uh, let's figure it out. And again, this will have to be that two-step process where we figure out the total area to the left of 0.5 and then subtract off this little bit to the left of 1.93. Okay, so total area to the left of 0.45, sorry, negative 0.45, negative 0.45. To the left of that is 0.3264. So we need 0.3264, and that's everything to the left of 0.45, and we need to subtract off this little tail bit, this what's to the left of negative 1.93. To the left of negative 1.93. And that's just a little bit, 0 0.0268. That is 0 0.0268. And again, that's a little bit of calculator work right there. Um, let's see, I want 0.3264 minus 0 0.0268, and that's 0 0.2996. I always feel like I should be able to do those subtractions in my head, but I can't, and I don't want to, so I'm not going to. Okay. All right, so that's a few. I think we've done a between, we've done a less than, we've done a greater than. Those are the basic three types of questions they can ask here. Uh, let's skip down to 38. I know this, is, this video is getting long, so this will be the last one. Uh, 38 says find the P5, the fifth percentile. This is the bone density score separating the bottom 5% from the top 95%. So let's draw that picture. Um, and this time I know the shaded area. I know that this little, see if I can hit it, yeah, that little bit, I know that's 5%. And I, the question is just what's the z-score? So this little shaded area is 5%. My question is what bone density score separates the bottom 5% from the top 95%. 
and stat disk is good at doing that also so we go back and rather than filling in a z value now we fill in the cumulative area from the left which is 0 0.05 and we evaluate that and say that's a bone density score and a z value of negative 1.64 about so equals a negative 1.64 so let's put it over here equals negative 1.64 Okay, there's way too many examples, but hopefully that'll get you a good start on section 6.2. And in section 6.3, we'll look at some more realistic real-life examples where the mean isn't necessarily zero and the standard deviation is not necessarily one.